Sviatlana Tsikhanouskaya has been thrust into the global spotlight, the figurehead of the Belarusian opposition, a 37-year-old woman standing up to Alexander Lukashenko, known as Europe's last dictator. Yet Tsikhanouskaya told VOA she does not seek international help. This political crisis that's, uh, uh, that takes place in our country is absolutely internal affair. And we have, uh, Belarusian people have responsibility for what's going on. And uh, we think that we have to solve this problem by ourselves. Their solution so far, people power. Tens of thousands of protesters have taken to the streets since the August 9th election, demanding the resignation of President Lukashenko. He claimed victory with 80% of the vote. The opposition, along with the United States and the European Union, say the vote was heavily rigged. Hundreds of protesters have been arrested and there is widespread evidence of abuse and torture. Tsikhanouskaya fled to neighbouring Lithuania after the election, fearing for her family's safety, but refused to elaborate further. I had big reasons to uh, make this step. Uh, I can't talk about this now, maybe somewhere in the future I will talk of them all my story, but now I can't comment on it. Now Tsikhanouskaya is trying to coordinate a roadmap for Belarus's future. First of all, we'll start negotiations when the authorities release all political prisoners who are innocent and still in Belarusian jails. We are fighting for free, fair and transparent elections, which means that every citizen of Belarus will be able to participate in those elections. A more pertinent question would be whether Mr. Lukashenko has the moral right to participate in the new elections after all those crimes he's committed. The Kremlin has invited Lukashenko to Moscow in the coming days. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he has a police reserve force ready to intervene in Belarus. Mr. Putin has to understand that if he does something against us Belarusians, it will seriously damage the relationship between Russian and Belarusian people. And because we are allied nations, we are considered almost brothers. It is not in the interest of either Belarus or Russia. Tsikhanouskaya stood for the presidency after the May arrest of her husband, popular video blogger Sergei Tsikhanovsky, who had planned to take part. The wives of other opposition figures offered her their support. Thousands of women have joined the anti-government protests in recent days. It's difficult for me because I want to be with them. And you know why? Because I do not fully feel that atmosphere. Observing it from here, it looks scary to me and they seem afraid. But people who are there tell me that they are inspired. We, the women of Belarus, are such a force. I am worried about them, but they are so strong. The protests have drawn comparisons with those in neighboring Ukraine in 2014 that led to the overthrow of President Viktor Yanukovych. Then the colors of the European Union flag filled Independence Square as the opposition courted Western support. Russia responded by annexing Crimea and invading eastern Ukraine. In contrast, Svetlana Tsikhanouskaya has, for now, explicitly rejected any outside intervention. Across the border, in her home country, the protesters continue to defy the government. Their future and the political fortunes of Tsikhanouskaya remain highly uncertain. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News.